In 2012, the Kodak Company, once the indisputable powerhouse of photographic equipment, supplies and services, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. It marked the end of an era, and it was a salient example of stubbornness on the part of corporate executives refusing to adapt to change. Cave drawings, literature, and paintings, all tools man has used to catalog his time here on Earth. Then came the camera, and suddenly we could record our activities with immediacy and physically store memories. George Eastman built an enterprise off photography. As the time passed, Kodak would pioneer new innovative methods of capturing and processing images, oftentimes using chemicals and film stock. Then, in 1975, a Kodak engineer would create a prototype digital camera. The device contained technology that would lay the groundwork for many of today's digital cameras. But Kodak decided not to fully develop its newfound product, instead letting others take the technology to new heights. Now, companies like Canon, Sony, and GoPro have brought photography into the 21st century with crisp, vibrant, high definition. Chuck Wolf has spent 30 years in the photography business. There was a day when his name was synonymous with premier photo services. He's a little older now and a little wiser, but he still has an appetite for enterprising ventures, as you'll see in today's Executive Profiles. Chuck, I bet a lot of people know, they think of you as an Atlantan, because you've been around this town for a long time, but you actually grew up in Oklahoma. Well, I moved from New York City to Oklahoma when I was five years old and left when I was 15. So I had my own horse and dogs and it was great. But uh, my father died when I was uh, 14 years old. So we moved back to Washington, D.C. My mother had brothers in the camera business and that's how I got in the camera business. I know that you were related actually to the Ritz camera family. Right, that was my uncle, that was my mother's brother. Right. And uh, I stayed there until uh, 1975 when I came here. Yeah. And after I graduated, I went back to Oklahoma University and after I graduated, I went to work for my uncle, went in the six-month Army Reserves. We built it up from six stores to 50. And then I realized that uh, I was running the whole thing, really. And I realized I was the nephew and my cousin was the son. Yeah. So I said, let me, let me try myself. So I went to Atlanta in 1975 with six stores. And I traded my stock on 25% of the company at that time. I have 50 stores. I traded for six stores in Atlanta right. and two stores in Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, we became very big competitors for the next uh, so many years. So in a way, uh, in, the, in the old retail world, you were a bit of a disruptor when you first started bringing camera stores to Atlanta. Well, I sold b below cost, but I made it up in volume. Right. And uh, we just uh, really uh, worked hard in marketing. And that's what I'm better at is marketing. When, in 2001, digital starts coming around. How does that change your view of the world? Yeah. Did you feel it coming well, or did you not think it was going to be this it, aggressive? It went very quickly. Yeah. And in 1998, I bought Fox Photo, right. which was a lot of stores. And they weren't really having, they didn't have digital machines in and I had to put that in there and I just couldn't, couldn't keep up with it because it was so close. Yeah. And in the camera store, you usually make most of the money in photo finishing. Yeah. And that means taking pictures and making prints right. and making enlargements. Yep. And we used to have the Wolfpack Club, and you would get two extra, uh, extra set of prints free. Sure. And everybody would take pictures and pictures and pictures and wouldn't even care what they look like, but they got the extra set of prints free, right. you know, and they took it. And now they have a digital camera, and they pick, they take 100 shots, and they like three of them, and they delete everything else. Yeah. So that kind of hurt the photo finishing business. So as things started sunsetting, and, and Ritz came back in and, and was able to uh, take out Take, wolf camera. Take, the take out Wolf Camera, but then they had to sure, close down their, their stores. Thing, right? Yeah, And in 2003, I stayed with Rich Camera right. until 2003. And I was the president of all the stores, yep. over a thousand stores, and I was co-chairman of the company with my cousin, which I got away with, you know, 30 <laughs> some odd years ago. But we got along very well, but I saw it happening again, so I wanted to go in the marketing business, so that was my life anyway. I, I think there are a lot of people out there who probably have seen a phase of their career come to an end, and then they go back onto another phase. Was it a hard transition? Or well, the transition was that I still was in the camera business. When I merged with him, I became president and co-chairman of the company, so right. I still, and in 2003, I decided that I just didn't want to do it. I was traveling all over the United States. Right. I was a lot older. I started having grandchildren. I just right. wanted to be here. So uh, 
uh, my cousin and I made a deal that I would do the marketing, the big marketing for the company, you know, like magazines and stuff like right. that, and, and, and television, and he would do the local advertising in all the different cities. And we worked on that for y years, and I hired my old partner, who you know, Cherry Carbone, who is a fantastic guy, and we started a company called Wolfbone Marketing. Yep. Wolf for me and bone for him. Yep. So, and we really did very well. Everyone thinks, well, I guess Chuck Wolf's all done with the photography business. Right. But you come up with the idea, and you decided to open a bar. Right. But it's a, it's a it, photo bar. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not a bar bar. Well, I, do water, I do have water, and I do have, uh, for sure, every Coke product you know there is because we're in Atlanta. I don't sell any cameras. Right. You f can't find a camera store. All I do is sell memories, art and decor. And what I try to do is get your phone, your smartphone, your digital camera, your digital uh, computer, and take those photos, those images, because a photo is not a photo until it's printed. And I'm capturing those images, and we build a store that looks like a little bit like a, a Starbucks and an and a Apple store, all professional photographers in the store, all Photoshop experts in the store. So we're there to hold their hand and take them through the process. So when you do a photo book, say, for a photo book, instead of used to you put the stuff in an album, now we make a book that's unbelievable. There's canvas. Right now we're hitting canvases every day. We do metal, we do anything. Every idea that we get, we're usually getting from the customer because they're saying, can you do this? We never heard of that. Right. We did it. Try. So it's a lot of fun. When you're mapping this out, do you see this as something you could grow? Do you hope to grow it? Or are you just happy having this one location here in Buckhead? No, and, no not no, me. No, I didn't <laughs> and I'm think too, so. And, I, and I'm too old to tell you that I shouldn't do it, but I love it, okay? <laughs> what we did with this is, is one store right. next to Johnny's Hideaway, 2,400 square feet. Sure. I was going to do it for fun. Then I started getting busy. No advertising for a while, just word of mouth. Yeah. But I used the word Chuck Wolf's Photo Design Bar. It's also online. I thought I was going to do just brick and mortar, yeah. but there's business there in the online, and, we, sure. and we're, all we're doing is saying quality, best quality, chat if you, if you need more help. Advice for young people out there who are starting their own businesses. First of all, would you tell a young person to put their own name on a business? I hope you have confidence in it. I, it does separate you from the competition. And I thought all in life, though, at Wolf Camera, that I, not just because of my name, I separated myself from the competition because I did different things in marketing and, and service and a little bit more than what they thought they would get. I think young people who are coming out of school today, they think the technology they're working with is the latest and greatest. Well, five years from now, that technology is going to be obsolete. Explain to them, how do you manage your way through that it's a concept of the fact that the technology is ever changing. Well, I wish I did a better job, okay, and that's where I made a mistake because I probably could have done something different years ago before digital came out. Number one, I, have too, I had too many stores, and that's, that's difficult too. If something changed, there was a lot of stores to correct, right. very expensive. But I would give advice that, that, that technology will change. And I'm looking for it every day. I look at all my competitors, you know, online and see what is coming out. I'm going to conventions to see what's coming out. But I think that this one is a pretty long-lasting one because I think people always want memories. Well, people still invest in high-end digital cameras, but most seem content snapping those magical moments with their smartphone. Many of these devices contain sophisticated technology allowing customers to capture vibrant images without much effort. Those that want a more professional look can buy attachable lenses, with some costing as much as $20. Ahead, bank deposits and home sales, two disparate sectors with a common thread, the economy. Patrick Crosby goes by the numbers to see how Georgia's economy is faring these days. So keep it right here. Atlanta Business Chronicle's Biz will return.